Sharks Hockey on Comcast Sportsnet California is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Satisfy your late night cravings with Jack's Munchy Meal, available after 9 p.m. at participating restaurants. By Toyota, do the math and save at your local Toyota dealer. And by Xfinity, home of the most live sports. As we said in our open, Alex Stalock gets the start for the Sharks in goal. He was between the pipes the last time they won on October 27th in Ottawa and was terrific with a 38-save performance in that 5-2 victory. That was his first NHL start, so he's perfect from that standpoint. And a new face to us, and actually to these home fans as well, goaltender Reto Berra, up from the American Hockey League, the Swiss-born netminder of 25 years of age. Came over in a trade with the St. Louis Blues in the Jay Bomeister deal. Todd McClellan and the Sharks try to avoid what happened to them last year when they started so well, then went through an extended winless streak. Right now they've dropped five straight, although picked up points in four. Bob Hartley's Flames, as we said, going through a rebuilding year. They've lost nine of their last 12, but so many of them by one goal or the empty netter that turns it into a two-goal loss. They play hard. They compete. They've just come up a little short in the talent department, especially on their power play. But they're always tough here at the Scotiabank Saddle Dome. And we're underway with the Sharks and Flames' second meeting of the season. Sharks took care of Calgary in that game at SAP Center back in October by a final score of 6-3. to three. Sharks game two of a five-game trip that started in Winnipeg with the loss to the Jets in the shootout on Sunday by the 5-4 final. They don't go back-to-back -back quite yet. They'll play in Vancouver next. That'll be on Thursday, but then they'll have the back-to-back -back Thursday, Friday, Vancouver, Edmonton. So it gets a little tougher as the trip goes on. But right now, literally taking it one game at a time here and trying to get back in the win column. Here's Dan Boyle. His slap shot comes off the skate of Tommy Wingles. Wingles now to retrieve it for the Sharks, but it comes off his stick and up the boards to David Jones for Calgary. He and TJ Galliardi work it, and a shot saved by Stalock. First rubber he sees here in the opening period of play. Now Mark Edward Vlasic sends it down the ice, and the Sharks will get their first line change of the opening period. Logan Couture on now. Sends it ahead for Marlowe. He'll let it go for Logan. He wants Kennedy out front. That's intercepted by Calgary. Now Michael Backlund, who had a two-assist game for them against Colorado on Friday when Calgary last played. And it goes for a stoppage here as we look at the Sharks' lines. And up front, pretty much everything the same, although Mike Brown is not in the lineup for the Sharks at the forward position. But a whole new look on defense, Drew, with completely different pairs from last game. Yeah, as we've talked about what Todd McClellan wants to do and the coaching staff obviously want to do is create a little bit more balance on the back end. So you're going to see some different combinations than we've seen for most of the year. In fact, almost all the year. But... Those are always subject to change. Brad Stewart, who did not play in Winnipeg, back in the lineup tonight. Matt Irwin is not in the lineup for Todd McClellan. As Justin Braun waits for it to come to the right point, sends it back down for Couture. Now Kennedy fighting for ice in front of the Calgary net. He takes it behind the goal line, feeds Marlowe in his one-timer block. Another shot, and they score! Logan Couture! The Sharks with the early goal. They lead 1-0. I can't think of a guy who needed to score more than Logan Couture, get that little game back to him. So important that Logan Couture be one of the major impact players in the San Jose Sharks. He struggled a little bit lately, but this is a nice job. Does the work in the corner. He's going to follow up the puck, just finds it in the mass. And boom, Sharks get the goal. Great job behind the net, working with the puck, protecting the puck. Good support from Kennedy. Patrick Marlowe goes to that soft spot. Nice little triangle for him. But then what? Follow the puck up when you can and get it to the net. And the Sharks score early. That's the eighth time they have scored in the first two minutes of the game. Couture had gone four straight without a goal, so he gets the first one here tonight. Just a minute and 32 seconds in, his eighth goal of the season. And the Sharks have the lead on the road here in Calgary as the Flames start a three-game homestand of their own. In fact, Calgary's played way more games away from home, 11, than they have here in their own building. This is just their seventh. Here's Sven Berchi, number 47, wants the rookie Sean Monahan, who's number two in rookie scoring behind Tomas Hurdle. Now Berchi has it poked away by Pavelski to center ice. Nice little bit of defense right there by the Sharks. Five guys working together. A little bit of a change that Pavelski had to go to the corner and use the stick effectively. 
Now Derek Smith, number 27 in red. His pass gobbled up by Joe, uh, John McCarthy. Now McCarthy comes across the line. His wrist shot stopped by Retta. And now back to Dan Boyle up top. A shovel shot toward the net. McCarthy positioned in front. But Calgary able to fight it off as Red O'Bara is seeing a lot of activity in his own end of the ice here in his home debut. Now the Flames back on it and trying to get this even here. Joe Colburn with it behind the San Jose net. Colburn watched by Andrew Desjardins. Gets it out to the right side. Brian McGratton's wrister is blocked by Vlasic. Colburn takes it to the crease and it's cleared away by Boyle and McCarthy combining. Now Dennis Wiseman jumps in. Throws this across the goal mouth. Kept in at the point by Chris Russell. Russell looking for Colburn behind the net. Can't pick it up cleanly. Chips it on for either McGratton or Boma. Neither gets to it. Shepard does for the Sharks and brings it out. The scoring play now official. Couture from Kennedy at 132. So it was determined that Patrick Marlowe did not get an assist on that goal. Here's Brad Stewart, the native of nearby Rocky Mountain House, Alberta. Just about 100 miles or so northwest of the Calgary area. Of course, the former Flame himself, as is Scott Hannon. Two Sharks blue liners with Calgary connections. David Jones, the former Avalanche forward, now played up the left wing by Stewart. Chasing back on it for Calgary is TJ Brody, and he gets it to Butler. Brad also played junior here as a Calgary hitman. Galliardi. A hometown boy from here in Calgary, playing in front of friends and family on a regular basis now after his trade from the Sharks. Brody trying to clear it up for Matt Stage and didn't get to it. Tomas Hurdle, a short little pass in for Joe Thornton. He'll get it to Demers and a pad save by Barra. Nice save by Barra there and a good setup as Jason Demers read the play, jumping in. Calgary on a change, Demers pumps it to the net again. And Red O'Bara well out to the front of the crease to make the stop as we check Drew's Lexus keys to the game. Defense has to come first. That doesn't mean you hunker down. It just means you're efficient and smart in your own end. Improve the work ethic. Todd McCollum and coaching staff were happy with the last game that the work ethic got better, but it needs to continue to get better and get to the maximum level. And I, I, I say it a thousand times a year. Execution, execution, execution. You've got to be able to make the right play at the right time. Demers. Paired with Scott Hannon, now Marlowe, nice pass for Kennedy right in his wheelhouse. Takes a stride, takes a shot, Barra the save. The rebound played right back to him, and the Swiss goaltender able to freeze it for a faceoff. And the Sharks really look like they have some jump tonight. They really do that. You know, we talked about efficiency. That, that, that breakout right there and that attack was perfect. Two, three-foot passes, four-foot passes, use the boards, bang, you're out of the zone, skate off the puck, support, bang. Shot on net, you're down in the other team's zone. Legacy split. Kennedy now with seven points on the year as he gets the assist on the Couture goal. That's five helpers to go along with his two goals this year. Joe Pavelski out with line mates, mates Matt Nieto and Martin Havlat off the draw. Nieto plays it to the front of the crease. Vera pushing it aside. Boyle jumps in, works behind the goal line. Tried to get it out front. Now Pavelski in traffic, out to Nieto. He'll skate away from Smith, leave it for Pavelski down low. Lee Stepniak returning to Calgary's lineup tonight. He missed the last seven with a broken foot, and they're hoping gradually as they get a little healthier, they'll end up in the W column a little more often. They're still missing their top defenseman and their captain, Mark Giordano, and he'll be out for a while. Now Pavelski into the Calgary zone, taken to the boards, bounces off that hit from Derek Smith. Now Havlat follows. He's got the puck for the Sharks back to Stewart. His shot blocked right back to him by Monahan. And Calgary with the breakout pass to Sven Berchi. Stalock the stop and he'll hand it off to Braun. There's the other thing, Alex Stalock looking up right away to play the puck. Alex is very good at playing the puck. So that's something to watch for versus Anthony Niemi who is a little bit more conservative. Marlowe wanted Kennedy, couldn't catch the pass. It'll be bumped out of the zone by Calgary's Chris Butler, number 44. Now Lance Boma into the corner with Stewart. McGratton back there, but a nice play by Braun and Kennedy on the way again across the Calgary line, but Marlowe's offside on the left wing. Sharks out shooting the Flames 7-2. They're leading 1-0 on a goal by Logan Couture. 
Sharks and Calgary for the first time this year. And Joe Pavelski had a game with two power play goals. Power play goals were very important as it was a close game into the third period for the San Jose Sharks. Joe Pavelski watched him yesterday after practice working with Tommy Wingles. That little thing you saw right there, his ability to get that stick on the puck. He worked on it for about 10, 15 minutes with Tommy Wingles after practice. Those little tricks, those little plays. Look out on the bench. That puck came in yep. hot and hard right between the Sharks coaching staff, Todd McClellan ducking out of the way, along with head equipment Mike. manager Mike Aldrich. Everybody was, everybody was jumping. <laughs> we don't need any more incidents on the bench. There's the great Mike Aldrich right there. You gotta keep your eye on it all the time all when, you're down, there. when you're down there. You We're safe there. up here. Very. But the only thing we could get hit with up here is a popcorn kernel. Or a lawsuit. <laughs> Don't give anybody ideas. Here's Matt Stage, and now the centerman for the Flames gets it back to Butler at the point. He back skates and then gets a shot away that's wide. Brody, that's intercepted by Thornton. And Hurdle, now on the boards with it for the Sharks, gets the puck flat up for Joe Thornton. Joe trying to get it deep, but he wouldn't like that earlier, that's for sure. He was wanting it and wanting it and wanting it, and Hurdle just couldn't get it to him. Stage and delaying on the near side against Vlasic. Couture over to support. Now Camilleri pushes it back for Chris Russell. One of the bigger wins for the year for the Calgary Flames was the debut of Red O'Bara. And Chris Russell helped that out with an overtime winner in Chicago against the defending Stanley Cup champions. So not only did Red O'Bara win his first Calgary start, but he won it against the defending Cup champs. Yuri Hoodler. And that's off Camilleri's stick. And that found its way just over the Sharks bench. Of course, the Sharks are on a five-game road trip here, but they'll be back in San Jose soon at SAP Center. And make sure to act now to get the best seats for the next Sharks homestand. Sharks will host Tampa Bay on November the 21st, and then the New Jersey Devils on November 23rd. Get your tickets now at sjsharks.com slash tickets. One nothing here on Logan Couture's eighth goal of the year. Just a minute and 32 in. Pavelski is shot and Barra at the edge of the crease makes the save and no rebound for Nieto who gets a shove from the newest Calgary Flame, Ladislav Schmid. Coming over from the Edmonton Oilers. There's Joe Pavelski just turning, firing the puck to the net. You've got people there, why not? I like the way the Sharks have been jumping on the loose pucks, been winning some races. There's Ladislav Smeet, came over the same day that the Oilers announced they signed Ilya Brzgalov. Was it a cap move to create some space, maybe? There's a one-timer from Pavelski, and Barra fights that off, and that's the ninth shot on goal that Reda Barra's faced here in the first period, and he stopped all but one. Important, working off the faceoff as well. So early in this game, you're seeing a lot of good things, a little spark from the Sharks. Barra's 25, spent seven years in the Swiss League before finally making his way to the National Hockey League, an original St. Louis draft pick, and then his rights were traded to Calgary in the Jay Bomeister trade last year. Interference for sure. Puts down Havlat, and Calgary's going to be shorthanded. Interference, boarding, or hitting from behind. What are your interference? You had your pick right there. Puck had yet to get to Martin Havlett in the neutral zone, and Ladislav Smead steps up. And one of the things they like about Smead is that he's a very physical guy. Three, Top two, right of the screen. Three. Check it out. You see right of the red line? Yeah, you can't do that. It's not allowed. 7.57, time of the Calgary penalties, so the Sharks will be on the power play. The Flames have had their troubles killing penalties. They've given up a power play goal in each of the last four games, and on the year overall, they're 28th on the penalty kill. Sharks on a Cash Creek power play here in the first period, leading 1 0, out shooting the Flames 9 2. They've had their way with them so far early in this game. Boyle on to Marlowe, back for Dan Boyle, who had the two power play goals in Winnipeg. Couture shot, blocked by Russell, and all the way back out to center and beyond. Kind of stung Russell a little bit. Stajan. Digging in there at center ice, had it away from Couture momentarily. Now Thornton sends it in. Barra out there to slow it down for the defense. And Brody able to work it to Russell and it's down the ice again. Sharks power play 20.5% on the year. They're ninth. After that two power play goal effort from Dan Boyle. One of the few times you'll score two power play goals in a game and lose. And Sharks falling 5-4 in the shootout. That's the first time in 25 games they did that. 
They don't do that. No, not many teams do that very often. Usually one is an indicator yeah. that you're going to have a good night. Not to say the Sharks didn't score their share of goals. They just couldn't get over the hump. They held a lead twice in that game against the Jets the other night, but nope. just couldn't prevail. I tell you what, they were two nice goals, too. This is a really good setup. You see that the foundation there, is, and I love this play by Logan Couture. Look at this pass. Between the legs, his own legs, between the legs of Zach Bogosian, and perfectly timed to Dan Boyle. Sharks 4-0-1 this year when they have two power play goals in a game, so that speaks to their excellence on the power play. They've had two power play goal games five times. Including one against Calgary as Demers slides it back across and gets it back from Justin Braun. 45 seconds left on the San Jose power play. Havlat, this one will bounce through as he tried to set up Hurdle and Vera covers. <laughs> this stop. The stop in front by Tommy Wingle stops in plenty of time. No, no shower or spray on Barrett or anything like that. And Mike Cavalier, he goes over and gives him a cross check anyway. <laughs> it's just so goofy. Don't even come close. Get out of here. Don't even come near him. Wingles on the faceoff. It's won by Stajan, but now Wingles gets it back and finds Demers open at the point. Back for Braun. Now from the faceoff circle, Wingles thought about a shot. Goes back up top. Havlat now. In front, Hurdle, a nice move, and then he's denied. Another chance for Hurdle. Didn't get all of that one, but two nice looks for Tomas Hurdle. As Galliardi comes back on the tail end of this Calgary penalty kill. Sharks down to 10 seconds left on the Ladislav Schmid penalty. Hurdle drops for Havlat. And that high turnover feeds the Calgary rush as Schmid comes back on the ice. Stempniak losing the puck, and Hannon's able to clear. Two shots on that power play, but the Sharks come up empty. It stays a 1-0 game. Now Monaghan. Stempniak. That comes back off a of Shark. Calgary gets on side, and it's swept back into the zone. Stewart. Now Kennedy and Hannon had that one get under his stick. Angling over was Birchie. That prevented Hannon from making a nice entry play. Stewart pressured by Berchi. Here's Desjardins. Andrew Desjardins cuts to the net. Can't get all the way there, though. But I like that idea of taking the yeah. puck to the net. So do I. And I like the fact in this period the Sharks have used a lot of board passes, a lot of indirect passes to beat the forechecking Calgary Flames. And it's provided them to be a, a little bit faster team right now. There you go. Stewart using that same approach there to work it up for McCarthy. It didn't quite work out this time. Now Schmid again with it. Seven years in Edmonton for Laddie Schmid. He was an original Anaheim draft pick. Came over to Calgary or Edmonton in the Chris Pronger trade. Here's Marlowe on a turnover. Quick shot, and I like the release. It was just wide. I like how fast Patrick Marlowe put it into gear. Quick, quick up on the transition, and Patrick Marlowe was moving. He has been skating since he's been out in the first shift. That pass off the boards. Blocked by the linesman, Lonnie Cameron. The great Lonnie Cameron. Demers just gets it to Couture. Now He's Kennedy in. with some speed going down Brody's side of the ice. Leaves it for Couture. His shot high. Demers will move in from the point. Needs cover back there, so Kennedy drifts back defensively as Galliardi comes ahead with Matt Stajan. Wide pass for Jones, and icing waved off as Stalock will play it off the glass. No, I think it was a little bit late tweet, but they oh, got boy. it anyway. Yeah, there was a whistle there. It yep. was very late on the hybrid icing call, and the faceoff will go all yep. the way back down. But again, that's this is this is the the, the compromise. So right here, Alex Stadok saying, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." You know, they want to eliminate that very situation, that race for the puck that gets to the goal line. Now Bob Hartley's yelling about it, but that's the compromise you're going to have. Sometimes you think those races should go on, and the referees go, "No, no, no." That's what we're trying to avoid. The NHL general managers met in Toronto today, and that's one of the topics they discussed. They watched a series of video clips of how the hybrid icing is working. It's still a work in progress. There's periods of adjustment, but the league claims there's just as many icings as there was last year, but no horrific collisions down at the board. So I guess from that standpoint, so far, so good. They won. Nieto tried to pull the trigger, but it was blocked. Now Pavelski builds a little wall against T.J. Brody. 
Pavelski protecting the puck, comes out of the corner with it. For Braun off the boards, his shot knocked down by Barra. Got his arm up on it, but Nieto back with it again. Tried to set up Pavelski. That deflects to Galliardi. He'll go to Jones, who taps it into the shark zone, and Calgary changes up. Sorry, Barra's a very aggressive goaltender. Nieto. Now Wingles trying to extend a six-game point streak. He's been the hottest shark offensively during this stretch where they've failed to win. Well, he said in the interview in the in the, in the pregame warm-up that he's just doing the simple things. I think another aspect is he's just going to the net as well. Here's Wingles and his shot saved and then Hurdle fans on the rebound. It was up off the ice. Boyle. Back to Vlasic. Wingles in front of the net. Here's Thornton with a backhander and a hard one at that, but it went wide. As McGratton tried to get it out and did. Apparently, we'll get an offside call against the Sharks, who lead it here 1-0. McDonald's True Stories 20 years ago on November 12th. 20 years ago, Mrs. Hurdle gave birth to Tomas Hurdle. Happy birthday, happy 20th birthday to Tomas Hurdle. He of the four goal game against the New York Rangers and then this goal seen around the world. That seemed like his birthday. Yes, absolutely. What a president it was for Martin Brion. Um, Not so much. Um, as a matter of fact, today to celebrate, he went and had a happy meal. He did? Yeah, yeah. He what, likes that pregame. What was the toy? Uh, it was the guy's toy. It was a car, a little car. Yeah. He, I don't think he has his license yeah, yet. I don't so think he has a North American that's license. That's the only <laughs> car he qualifies for right now. I think Alex Daylock is the chauffeur for this Monsieur Hotel. Sharks up one nothing here, and they're out shooting the Flames 13 to two. Desjardins works it to James Shepard, out of the corner to Boyle at the point. Shepard wheels a backhander around. Desjardins there cuts away from Berchi. Now low again for McCarthy. He'll get it to Vlasic. Now Shepard back over to Desjardins. There she intercepts. Smith will clear it to center and the Sharks will get a line chain. Nice. Again using the boards to Desjardins who's on the tail end of his shift and that hard wrist shot just goes wide. Picked up by Kennedy. Desjardins still out there looking to make a change. To Marlowe, Patrick to Demers, gives it right back to Marlowe, and that handcuffed Patrick, Backlund was right on him to break it up. Completely dead end of them. The best play there is just to push it deep. Now Hannon jumps in. Weidman, trying to play the angle, forces the shot wide. Pavelski with it, or make it Kennedy with it, as he tried to get around Chris Russell. Kennedy all the way to the point. Rims it around for Marlowe, but he was in front of the net. Demers, that's tipped by Ooh. Couture. What a save by Red O'Bara. Was it ever a great save? Couture almost had his second there. We'll be right back. Back live in Calgary and an area look at the downtown area, which back in June when they had heavy rains here in central and southern Alberta, forced the banks of the Bow River to overflow. This is inside the Scotiabank Saddle Dome time-lapse photography as that. this building filled up with water, 10 yes. rows up into the main bowl, flooded. And to give you some perspective, and, and, and so much dirt and mud. Oh. There was 30, an estimated 30 million gallons of water in this building. And you can imagine the intensive project to get it ready for the start of the NHL season. They worked for about three months, 24 hours a day. And that was, what, a week before Stampede? Around that 10 days, a week before Stampede started, which is huge. Calgary Stampede, Stampede yeah, huge, yeah, huge, huge rodeo and the carnival event here. Ken King came out, president of the Calgary Flames, right away and said, we will have this building ready. And they worked 24-7 for weeks. And it's amazing what they've done, really. They changed the slogan for Stampede, too. They said, we're having it come hell or high water. <laughs> <laughs> and it was devastation everywhere here. But There was some loss of life as well. It was a, a terrible event here in this region and really tested everyone's will and ability to recover. But that they did, as is evidenced in being able to still play normally here in this building at the start of the season. A wrist shot by Jones, and Alex Stalock finally tested with a third shot on goal. Look where he is when he makes that save. So a little turnover in the neutral zone. The Flames cross back up, and they're going to go back to the San Jose Sharks end. 
Watch where Stalock is. Right out, past the blue, making himself big. Square, set, good stop. Corey Schwab, goaltending coach, is right beside us. Wayne Thomas, goaltending coach extraordinaire. He is also back home watching, and he will be happy with the first real test. It wasn't a great shot, not a great test, but still, you look at that, and you go, okay, what's he doing? All the fundamentals right there. Well, you're always a little wary, too, when your starting goaltender doesn't see a lot of rubber in the first yeah. period. You can get cold after warming up before the game if you don't see many shots, and that was just the third that Staylock saw. Meanwhile, down at the other end, Red Obera's seen 15, and he's been looking pretty good. Boy, that save off Logan Couture was a monster save. A great chance. Now Camilleri scoots across center to the Sharks line against Vlasic, who angles him off the puck. Hurdle for Vlasic. Wanted Wingles, missed him, but it came out. Joe Thornton, outstanding job as a second man into the zone to support the play. As Vlasic took out his man, puck went to the corner. Joe Thornton was right there, but then Vlasic followed up. He popped the puck out of the zone. They are being very efficient in their own zone right now. Here's Wingles trying to cut in against Brody. Turns back, now looks for an open man, and he finds one. Demers. Wrists it through traffic all the way out to the far side. Hannon, who'd come up the boards, gets it to Hurdle. Tomas Hurdle off a stick in front from Brody. Now to Jardin, looking to relay it back to the front of the net. And it's controlled by the Flames with under four minutes left here in the first period. This one will be icing. So Joe Thornton works his way back hard through the neutral zone. And as he does, he's got to be able to read the play as well. Just keep it frozen for a sec. There's Joe Thornton. Now roll ahead, guys. Now he's coming back. He's picking up his man. Now he sees the play, so he's going to jump over the puck. He's second guy into the zone. He puts it up to the boards. Now Vlasic follows it up, pops it out of the zone. If it would have been handled clean on the boards, they would have been out a little bit quicker. But still, well done by Joe Thornton and Mark Edward Vlasic. As we thought they might, they've taken another look at that San Jose goal, and they've given Marlowe the primary assist after all. Here comes Calgary on the attack. Stepniak slowed down. And Kennedy trying to find it in his skates. Out to center. But it's pulled back in by Weidman. He'll send it ahead. Intercepted by Demers. Hannon for Couture. You heard the bench yell, heads up. He's going to get checked right away. Kennedy weaves through traffic, sends it off the glass, deep into the zone. Sharks completing their line change here as Pavelski's group comes out with Nieto and Hadlatt. Up at center, McGratton chips it deep. Stalock helping Stewart out just a little bit. Brad Stewart sends it back into Calgary territory. Russell watched by Pavelski across to his defense partner, Weidman. Now a nice pass. Lance Boma's offside. Oof. That was close. It was close. Middle was wide open. Authentic 49ers fans turn to Comcast Sportsnet for in-depth coverage every day and online. Plus, the official post-game show of the team is 49ers Post Game Live. The authentic home of the 49ers is Comcast Sportsnet. Niners getting set to play at NOLA this weekend. That's New Orleans, Drew. Thank you very much, but I had no idea what you were talking about. Looking to rebound out their loss this past weekend. Alex Stalock for Brad Stewart. McCarthy can't handle the pass. David Jones, last year with the Colorado Avalanche. I liked his music career. <laughs> I don't know, I was always a Peter Tork guy. Really? Yeah. That's out of play onto the Calgary bench. No Michael Naismith? Nope. Yeah, Mickey Dolans. You can't go wrong either for hey, Michael Naismith, Mom, what did she invent? I've asked you this before. Uh, you know what? You know this. I think I do know yeah, it. Is it white out? Very good. Yeah. Very, very good. How'd she do with that? She did okay until computers, and then everybody started marking up, mark, marking up their screens. You couldn't see it. Need a, she needed to invent <laughs> virtual whiteout after that. <laughs> it's called the delete button. <laughs> Butler off the faceoff win by Calgary. There are people out there going, what are you two guys oh, talking No, no, they're just sticking in the Google machine. They'll figure it out I'll in the intermission. Okay. They'll have it all figured out in time to watch your interview. Hey, hey, we're the monkeys. Scheduled a visit with the Sharks. Logan Couture in our first intermission. Want to stick around for that as Thornton rims it around to this side for Dan Boyle. Thornton takes it, turns, backhand. Wanted hurdle in front, blocked by Calgary. And Hoodler will clear it down the ice. Sharks. Nope. Clear the puck out. 
It was deflected out, according to the officials. Our referees, Mike Hazenfratz and Brian Pockmero. We talked about Lonnie Cameron, one of the linesmen. Tony Saracola Tony is the other linesman here tonight. Tony Saracola has been around for a while. He so. is a veteran linesman in the National Hockey League. Calgary with home ice gets the last change here, so head coach Bob Hartley makes some adjustments based on who the Sharks send out. Oh. Kennedy off the faceoff, sends it into Calgary's zone. Russell tried to clear it. Now Couture around it. Back for Demers. Cannon will wrist it to the net. Red O'Bara makes the save and then catapulting over him is Tyler Kennedy. No penalty here. Tyler Kennedy driving hard to the net and he was being checked by Chris Russell. And as you go hard to the net, you're going to take a bit of punishment. Quick shot towards the net. There's Chris Russell extending the arms and pushing Tyler Kennedy over his goaltender. That would have been a stretch to call yes. Kennedy for goalie interference yes, there. Yeah. Although the Sharks are familiar with that call as it happened to them in overtime in Winnipeg on Sunday, denying a goal by Patrick Marlowe, which would have ended the game. And then a couple of games before that, we know what happened to Tommy Wingles in overtime. Well, Tommy Wingles was the guy that got called in the goal interference, too. And was it last year, too? Was it last year who against who that he was? He had a goal disallowed in overtime? It was Calgary, wasn't it? Not sure. Schmee against Pavelski. Family coming up to Calgary. Here's Marlowe. Trip in front. Gets it up top. A Staylock leads the net for an extra skater in the form of Joe Thornton, who's on now. Demers. And that's off Jones stick and up into the glass. And Jason Demers not happy with that pass. But the Sharks now on a power play with a little over a minute to go in the period. Just in front of the net, Patrick Marlowe was all by himself. The Flames had to collapse to help out. And as he was going to get the puck, at two. Calgary penalty number 18, two minutes to the third. Just check out in front. A little shot in the back. I yeah, thought you tripped. Just the second minor penalty of the game. Matt Stajan with interference. Schmid got the interference call earlier. So a second look at the Sharks on the power play tonight. Thornton, Couture, Marlowe across the top. Pavelski and Boyle on the back end. They've been great in the face -offs. Much improved during this winless streak. Marlowe scores! Over the shoulder, top corner. Patrick Marlowe breaks a scoring slump, and the Sharks take a 2-0 lead. Two guys that we talked about last game could really spark the Sharks into a win. Patrick Marlowe, Logan Couture have scored in this game. Face-off win. Key, obviously. Great face-off win. Real simple. Fake shot. Get it back to Patrick Marlowe, but check out the work in front of the net. 39, Logan Couture doing an outstanding job. Look at his position here. Talk about getting in the eyes. Oh, fantastic job by Logan Couture. Forced Barra back in the net. Provided a little bit more space for Patrick Marlowe. So that's a really well done power play. Really efficient. Terrific shot by Marlowe. But Logan Couture and Patrick Marlowe, they got things going already. Marlowe's still one of the top goal scorers in the league with nine. But he had gone seven in a row without a goal. So that's a big one for number 12. And the Sharks get the payoff on the late power play attempt. And now they've got the puck again. Still 45 seconds to go in the period. Desjardins sends it up the boards. But it's intercepted by Backlund for Calgary. Good back check by McCarthy, though. Interrupts the entry into the zone as Yuri Hoodler skates east to west. Knocked out of the zone with a glove by Stewart. Marlowe on the power play from Pavelski and Thornton at 19.04. That took just six seconds. Win the draw, get the shot. Light goes on. Thank you very much. 2 nothing. Sharks as they score on their 17th shot of the period. Havlat off the boards. This will go down. And no icing here as Butler gets there. And pass in front. Oh. Cleared by Weidman to his net. And Barra had to make a save. Off his own defenseman. That'll do it for the first period as the Sharks dominate and they get a big goal from Marlowe to kind of get into the kitchen a little bit of Red O'Bara, who had been very good up to that point. He made 15 saves in the period, but after one, it's the Sharks two, Calgary nothing. Stick around. We'll check in with Brody Brazil and Brett Hedekin back in our studios. And Drew Drew is back to talk to the Sharks, Logan Couture. For catering through Stanley Sports Bar, Oakland Ice Center offers catering options in your own private party room 
or ringside. Ten people or a thousand, they can handle it at Shark's Ice. Just go to sharksice.com. Ridiculous portions at, at Stanley's. I mean, ridiculous in a good way. You'll be stuffed. You want to go to Stanley's, and you got Tim Horton's coffee. Three shots allowed by the Sharks in that first period. That is the second time they've allowed that few a number in a period. It also happened at Boston when they allowed three shots in the first period to the Bruins. It also means you've got the puck. Well, and that also explains things like block shots, only one for San Jose. Hits, only two for San Jose. When you have the puck, you don't have to do as much of those things. And they did have the puck a lot. <laughs> the hit stat gets tossed out there a lot. You know, you and I do uh, tons of interviews on visiting stations and, and other radio and TV stations talking about the San Jose Sharks. They always ask about the hits. And I always, well, you don't really need to hit anybody when you've got the puck all the time. The only difference between you and I doing yeah. a lot of those is you are compensated handsomely. Yeah. And I'm awesome. just doing favors. I mean, it's, my, it's in my contract, though. I must get compensated for everything I do. I'm actually getting compensated for this right now. You have a tremendous agent. I do. I do. She is wonderful. Matt Stajan <laughs> works the puck up. And Chris Butler finds Stajan back open at center as the Calgary Flames try and rebound from a tough first period here on their return home from their road trip where they picked up just two out of a possible eight points. We mentioned coming into tonight they've lost nine of 12, and that was after such a great start to the season. Calgary came out of the gates flying. In fact, they had points in their first five games, establishing a franchise record. They have never had never done that before, and people were saying, hey, look at the Flames. But now a little bit of the reality is set in, along with the injuries to Giordano and uh, Glenn Cross and Stempniak, and before that, uh, Camilleri. And yeah. now you have the situation that they have now, 10 points out of a playoff spot with 14. Up to their eighth game, I think it was uh, from games four to eight, they had a 30% power play roll, and it was it looked good. And since then, they have not been able to score on the power play. They've had some trouble. Patrick Marlowe, and he tests Red Overa with a shot that stopped with the pad. Good recovery by Couture, just coming out of the zone, and a quick re-entry oh, off the stick of oh. Marlowe. And Couture is down in front of the Sharks bench and shaken up. Oh, he got... Uh, Clipped with, I think, with a high stick in the neutral zone. It was quite, quite evident. Watch. Comes back. Watch the stick. Bang. Oh, man. That's Backlund. Backlund. Oh, it was obviously, it was not intentional, but it was, it was a clip without a doubt with the high stick and no call to Backlund at all. The four men in stripes did not see it. That one was. And Couture is going to yeah, the dressing room. That one, it was. Because also he slanted, he was he, fresh ice, right? So he's cutting back through the neutral zone. He's going hard. He gets clipped with a stick. And he goes sliding into the boards quite heavily as well. So the Sharks down a forward here for the time being. No call on the play, so it's still five on five. With the Sharks up two nothing. Pavelski waits for Havlat to get onside. Puts the puck into the corner. Now Russell from behind his net. And Monaghan will stick handle. Russell back up ice for Berchi. Sven Berchi back inside. Nice and then Stewart helped out Braun there as they recover. Havlat for Nieto. Onto the stick of Pavelski. Good block there by Stemniak. Yeah, was, you know what? That was really well done out of the zone. Good support. Little quick passes. And then that turnover neutral zone. Good. Weidman sends it in for Calgary. Sven Berchi. He's been healthy, scratched a couple of times by Bob Hartley early in this season. Centering pass comes off a shark stick. McCarthy chips it up through center ice. Laddie Schmid back on it for the Flames. He banks it perfectly up to center. Slap shot handled by Stalock Hold on as for a Boma here. getting into it after that save by Alex Stalock. Now they settle. So just watch the five guys, how well they work together. Go ahead, roll. Defense pressures, defense pressures. Joe Pavelski picks up the puck. Good support by Martin Havlin. Now start moving up through the middle is, is Nieto, and then Nieto to Pavelski. If it's not for that turnover there, that is like a foundation clip. Brett Heimlich was almost pressing F1 to mark that as a foundation clip. Unfortunately, it got turned over in the neutral zone, but it really well done on the breakout. Tomas Hurdle. Brody got it off his stick, but Tomas back to recover. 
Thornton delays. And now steered in by the stick of Tommy Wingles. Red O'Bara comes out, but then he's called off by Brody. The pressure on the boards, but Calgary's able to get it out. Excellent support, though, by Joe Thornton. Man, he is competing. Wingles around for Thornton. Behind the net hurdle. He left it in the corner, but Stajan was there, not Joe Thornton. But Hurdle gets it back at the blue line. Now looks to Dish. His pass broken up by T.J. Brody, and the Flames will come out with it after all. Stajan down the wing. Jones goes to the net, takes the pass, and he missed the shot. Great play. Crashed hard in the boards. Jones a little shaken up. He's favoring his left shoulder as he skates back to the Calgary bench. And David Jones shaken up on that collision after the shot that went wide, and now Calgary offside. Great chance by the Flames. Turnover high in the offensive zone by the Sharks. Now they've got four guys up in the rush. Nice little pass, and bang, you lose an edge, and slam! David Jones goes into the end boards. Nice little pass by stage, and really good pass. Going high, blocker side. And as we said, that ice is fresh, and plus Calgary ice is notoriously quick. Very good ice surface here. Guys love skating here. So you start to slide, you're not stopping until you hit something. Logan Couture's back out of the dressing room, up on the Sharks bench, ready to take his next shift. Chance for Calgary there. Backlund can't settle the Camilleri pass. Now Mike Camilleri from the goal line, and that'll go back behind and out to Laddie Schmid, who has one goal and one assist so far this year. All of that, of course, coming with the Edmonton Oilers, whom he was traded from on Friday. Now Demers chasing it down as Camilleri's in on the four check. Off Kennedy, but not out. Backlund to the front of the net, had Hoodler there. Calgary bouncing back here to start this second period with a much better effort. You'd expect that. I imagine their coach got after him pretty good after a two-shot first or a three-shot first period. Weidman, Stewart's there. And now chip back up to center by Braun. Stalock leaving it there for Justin Braun. Sharks goals in the first period from Logan Couture and Patrick Marlowe. Marlowe's coming on a power play for his ninth goal of the season. Berchi lost it as he tried to go around Braun. Now Russell for Calgary. Pavelski there again with a good stick, and he gets it away to Havlat. Good support by Havlat. See where he popped out to? That little soft area. Nieto for Havlat. Marty Havlat back for Matt Nieto, comes off the boards, gives for Dujardin. Andrew Dujardin a wrist shot, and Barrow with the glove save. Logan Couture back on the bench, as you mentioned. He has been hit a couple times in the face tonight already. Go to the net. Bang, gets the stick. I do believe it was his own guy. I believe it was, it might have been Kennedy. Tyler Kennedy's yeah. stick. I think this one right here gets clipped by Backlund. That one smarts. But as a hockey player, what is he doing? He's going back out on the ice. That's not enough to put him out. I don't think you don't tape a Band-Aid to your mouth in no. that situation. No. But Ask Brent Burns. Something. They probably like to tape Band-Aids to our mouths, but for different reasons. <laughs> Duct tape. Shepard for Desjardins. Can't fix it. Duck it. <laughs> and Desjardins. That'll go around and out giving Chase McCarthy and Boyle as McGratton gets there just a shade ahead of them. Nice little foot race there. Sharks have just one shot on goal through over five minutes of this period, so it's turned a little wow, bit in that regard. Sorry, sorry, partner. That's why. You just you just saw why. Coming through the neutral zone, did they get it past the blue line? Very, it's just right to the Flames defense, but then it's going the other way. You generate shots by getting pucks deep. You get pucks deep by making the right play in the neutral zone. They've been good coming out of their zone. They've been okay through the neutral zone, but just as they get to the offensive blue line, they stop putting it deep. They've turned the puck over, and when you turn the puck over, it feeds the transition game of the opposition. Sharks won the face-off battle in the first period, 60%. Calgary is able to get this face-off, however. Hannon able to recover it for the Sharks. Now Schmid against Wingles. Demers comes in to Thornton behind the net. Hurdle. He'll let go, and it's a shot pass to Demers. That just missed. 
just missed his right. A nice play. Hurdle with the heads up all the way, shooting off the net. Demers came down, pinched down the boards, and then stayed in because he had the coverage, he had the support up high. Just keep, just like, perfect look at it right here. Demers, see him present the stick. Just not heavy enough on it as the blade just kind of flexed too much, but a nice heads up play. Joe Thornton waiting, finding the right guy. Hurdle just wants to shoot to the stick. Shooting off the net, shot well off the net. Very heads up play, just couldn't finish it. Hurdle wins the draw cleanly back to Brad Stewart. Now to Thornton on the half boards. Joe pressured by Weidman. Behind the net, it's Hurdle. His pass denied. Now Wingles. He's checked off the puck by Schmid. Good play. Boma can't get it into the zone. And here's Hurdle again nearing the end of a shift to Thornton. He's got a couple of options. Goes to Hurdle on his backhand. And he couldn't get it to the net. Hurdle worked his way well to the front of the net. Braun for Hurdle. Hurdle and Thornton have been on a while. Here's Thornton. Braun pulls the trigger. Partially blocked. Hurdle on the rebound. Tomas Hurdle in for a fresh Logan Couture. Back for Braun. Hard shot blocked by Schmeed. Now Kennedy. Sharks get a fresh line on, and his shot turned aside by Barra. It's out of play. They get it deep. They go to work. They get chances. Still 2-0, Sharks. Time for our Geico quote of the night from the Sharks defenseman Brad Stewart, who said, quote, you've got to combine effort and execution, and if you don't have one or the other, it's going to be tough sledding. 100% on the money. Bradley, not normally a quotable guy, keeps to himself, stays pretty quiet, but he's right in the money when he was asked the question there about getting the things going in the right direction. He's absolutely right. You gotta have the work ethic, but you gotta have the execution as well. That's why Randy on our Lexus Keys to the game, we had both. It would have been tough sledding around Calgary today. There's yeah, snow, nice. but it warmed up so much today to around well, close to 50 degrees Fahrenheit that it got kind of slushy. Off the shot block, here's Backlund for Calgary, and he tried to place that in front for Camilleri. Stalock got a piece of it. Back come the Sharks with some speed through the middle. Kennedy, he's got Marlowe going to the net, and that one won't get to Patrick. Now Russell. Or Butler, rather. And now a shot from Hoodler blocked in front of the San Jose net. Calgary continues to show a little more offensive prowess in this period. Still, though, only four official shots on goal. A couple have been blocked. Icing called there. Quite sure about that play. Nice job coming out of the zone. Patrick Marlowe will pop out to Dan Boyle. I like the way the Sharks have been in their, in their own zone, where they've just found that little pop-out space where you can work at puck in the corner along the boards, but then one guy releases to that soft area. You pop it to him, and the Sharks are on their way. Off the face off, Staylock with a stop. That was a tough one. That was a knuckler. You're going to have another icing right here. That was a knuckler on Alex Staylock. And you expect to push back from the Calgary Flames, which they have so far in this second period. But you also now expect the Sharks to realize what's happening and get their foot back on the gas. Bob Hartley urging his guys on, and he knows the next goal is huge in this game. Classic, looking for Marlowe, perfect chip to Couture. Now Logan moving down the wing against Chris Russell. Smart play. Gets it around for Havlat. Martin Havlat to Demers, he'll lean back and put one on net. Push ahead with his glove by Hannon, they'll whistle that down. And a face off. Well, Scott Hannon, talking to the coaching staff, one of the guys they've really been happy with defensively, a very consistent performer. They trust him, Jay Woodcroft, Larry Robinson, Jimmy Johnson, the assistant coach is talking about how consistent he's been. Why? Because he understands the foundation of his game, knows what he has to do, keeps it simple, but for the lack of a, a better phrase or saying, because that's what they all tell you, well, I'm just keeping it simple. What that means is just I'm doing the right thing at the right time. And that's why Scott Hannon has been so good. Talk to Scott, too, about his conditioning, because he's a much more fit athlete than he's been before. He said, hey, as you get older, you've got to do more things to stay in the game. Lavelski battling in the faceoff circle. 
Then he battles to try and get to the puck, but he's prevented from doing so. Nieto does, though, his shot blocked. This will be icing against the Flames. Sharks fans, check out CSNCalifornia.com for all of your favorite features, which are available on demand right now. Log on and hit the ice with Logan Couture and Brent Burns as we follow them shift by shift in the season debut of the popular segment Shark Bite Miked Up. CSNBayArea.com, your authentic home for Bay Area sports. Brent Burns on this road trip. Took the morning skate today, but not available yet. Still day to day. Here's Hurdle behind the Calgary net. Sharks lead 2-0, both goals in the first period from Couture and Marlow. As McGratton just bumps it out to center for Calgary. Back to Stewart, he'll get it in. Schmid run into by Hurdle. Another icing call against Calgary. 19-5, the shots right now in favor of San Jose. It's interesting, Tommy Wingles and Tomas Hurdle playing with Joe Thornton. That line because of the quickness of the wingers. They play fast, they play tough, but when Joe Thornton gets the puck down low, there are very few defensemen in the world that can take that puck off him. He's just so dominant when he gets the puck down low in the corners behind the net. And of course, his ability to pass, we, uh, it's been well documented. Stewart trying to make a quick play with the puck along the boards. Now Barrow will leave it for his defense behind the Calgary net. Up to center, it's Jones. Off Galliardi's stick, turn back over to Pavelski. And the big Pavelski slaps it in. Block, back come the Flames. Stajan, he's got Galliardi with him. Matt Stajan waits, pass, and Galliardi fanned on it. That was close. Nieto with Havlat back the other way. Marty Havlat for Nieto, and Barra has to fight it off. Now staging again. Classic tried to bat it down. Galliardi gives Boyle a hit. Shepard up to center for John McCarthy. Butler for Hoodler. Now Brody busts over the San Jose line. On the wing, the pass comes back toward the middle, taken away by Boyle. Here's McCarthy. With Desjardins wide on the right. Andrew Desjardins can't handle that hard pass. Chases it down. Two flames back there defensively. McCarthy comes in to help out. Puck to James Shepard. He'll rim it for McCarthy behind the net. To Merz. Quick give back. Desjardins can't get to it in time. And Weidman will control now for the flames. Well, from Calgary's standpoint, they have stopped the bleeding, that's for sure. But they've still managed only five shots so far, and we're past the halfway point of the game. They've matched the Sharks in that category, though. There's five each for these teams. There's four for the Sharks, isn't it? No. Sharks had 17, 17, so they've got two in the period. 17? 17 after one. 15, Nope. 17. I swear. I don't believe it. Marlowe. Couture. Kennedy, oh. oh, if he turned around, it was an open net backhander. Maybe he'll get another chance here. Can't quite get the handle on it. Cleared up to Berchi. He doesn't get it out. Here's Kennedy again. Down the wing. Berchi, after Kennedy was checked by Monaghan, and the Flames will work it to center. Stepniak can't get it away from Braun. Justin Braun, a nice pass to Hurdle. Wingles heads for the net. Tomas Hurdle, toe drag. Tomas Hurdle. Oh, and he can't get the backhand away. Nice play. Braun throws it to this side of the boards. Thornton there. Butler able to get to it just ahead of Tomas Hurdle. Nice and a play hit by Braun. Braun puts Boma down. Now McGratton checked by Stewart. Business picking up here a little bit now here in the second period. Hurdle at center. He'll swing it in. Barra gives it away to Pavelski on the board. Joe Pavelski falls, gets back up. Colburn trying to get it from him. Pavelski on a knee back to Vlasic. Now Boyle. Havlat shoots through the goal creeps. Boyle tees it up. That's off a skate. Pavelski 
Havlat turns off the boards. Boy, he faces the net. Joe Pavelski trying to set up Nieto. And the Flames able to clear. Icing waved off, and Stalock will leave it for Vlasic to control. Jones. Now Havlat. It goes back to Galliardi. Vlasic's got to be careful. He's got stage and right on him. Desjardins. Nice work on the board. Shepard now trying to muscle it away from two flames. Nieto's there. You've talked about it a number of times tonight. The good support the yeah. Sharks have provided one another tonight. Terrific. You know, Nieto, how calm is he? Young guy, rookie in the league, makes that play. Shepard with some speed and a shot saved by Barrett. Rebound stopped as well. McCarthy couldn't control it with his skate. Galliardi to center for Calgary. He'll lob it in. Now the Sharks with 23 shots as they've found the net six times with shots in this period. 23 minus six is what? 17. Okay, thanks. That's what they got in the first period, right? Yes. Okay. Hoodler <laughs> across. Here's Cal oh. Camilleri trying to dipsy do it around Hannon. He is a slippery guy. Marlowe with some speed. Pressuring the puck against Russell to Couture. Back for Kennedy, and he missed just wide. Stewart, a bouncing puck. He took a swing and missed. This faster pace really seems to favor the Sharks. Here's Berchi in front of the oh. net, off a of Calgary skate. No penalty. The players are looking for one and a hook. John Monaghan. Yep. That stick of hurdles has been sitting behind the Calgary net for about five minutes because we haven't had a whistle. Stewart ranging back, drives it off Top. the boards. It'll drop right at center ice, back down to Sven Berchi. 540 left in the second period here in Calgary. Second meeting this year between these two teams. Flames will make another trip to San Jose a little later on in the season. Wingles backhander, he wanted hurdle, but getting just enough of that was Brody. Good hustle by Wingles. Stay lock out. There's that play in the puck. Quick up pass to Hurdle. Now have lap. Around for Pavelski. He checks his shoulder, but he saw Hurdle going off. So he sends it in for Havlat. Schmid tying up the puck. But Havlat gets it to Pavelski. He'll try and get it to the net. Does. Barra dives down on it. And everybody arrives. Sharks pressuring, but it stays 2-0 here in Calgary. Well, Alex Stalock getting his second start of the season tonight here against the Calgary Flames. Made his first NHL start. The last time the Sharks won Drew in Ottawa, he was terrific. He was brilliant in that game. The Sharks are at the end of the road trip. They were tired. They played a tough game in Montreal the night before. And Alex Daylock was brilliant in that game. And he becomes the third goaltender facing 40-plus shots in his first NHL start among active goalies. It happened to Luongo back in 99 and Brett O'Bara, who's at the other end of the ice tonight for Calgary. It happened to him in Chicago against the Blackhawks, and he came up a winner. We've got a tradition here. The player of the game has to wear a red fireman's helmet. Yeah. And Red O'Bara wore it through the entire NHL Network interview awesome. after the game. Good for him. Awesome. A lot of coaching staff do things like that. They, you know, there's like a, you know, a hard helmet for the hardest worker or, you know, a, like a fireman's out hat, which is suitable here for the Flames. So a little something just to bring the team together. Hand it out to the guy who gets it for the game performance. Red O'Bara, one of two active netminders in the NHL, born in Switzerland. The other one is Jonas Hiller of the Anaheim Ducks. Ducks playing tonight as well. They're trailing in the third period in Florida, and here's something that will probably warm Sharks' hearts. Sharks fans' hearts. The LA Kings lost in Buffalo tonight in a shootout. And Jonathan Quick apparently was injured in that game in overtime. He had to leave the game. Wait reports on Quick's situation probably by tomorrow to see if he'll be able to make LA's next start in goal. And that's not good news for LA to lose Jonathan Quick. Nope. The goalie that only team loses their number one goalie is going to be tough to go and continue winning games like LA has been. 
he is a huge part of their success. And quite likely, the projected starting goaltender for yeah. Team USA in the Olympics. I can't think of anybody who would be ahead of him. Stajan up through center. Galliardi chips and chases. Demers back pulls it away nicely from Galliardi in the quick up tomorrow. And now the Sharks break out. Couture to Hannon. Hannon joining the rush and giving it to Kennedy. Kennedy back in front. Hannon the tip saved by Barra. Crashing the net. Couture, but nothing went in. Back comes Calgary. Jones wants Galliardi. And back in front for Jones. Good coverage by Kennedy, though, staying with David Jones, the Calgary forward. Justin Braun enters the Calgary zone, takes it to the net. Barra save. Rebound shot. Thornton denied. Just over three to go in the second period. Both goals for the Sharks coming in the first from Couture on their first shot of the game. And then on their last shot of the first period, Marlow on the power play. Camilleri, and there's an offside whistle and a late one, and the fans don't like it, and neither do the Flames. We'll be back in Southern Alberta. Sharks' Tomas Hurdle has one of the goal of the year candidate plays. Also, my TJ Galliardi. Look at this one. Well, actually, this was wow. last year. Hey, how good is that? Remember that goal? That is such a nice goal by TJ Galliardi. And TJ last year, especially in the playoffs, started to find his game, especially with Joe Thornton and Brent Burns. But took the 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 chance to go to Calgary, come back home. That's got to be nice for somebody to play. NHL hockey in their hometown. Galli already had a, a terrific goal this year for his only goal, but he's gone 15 straight since that one. He's on the schneid trying to get off it. Here's Hoodler back the other way for Calgary. Sharks leading 2-0 here in the middle period with 2.45 to go as Stalock aggressively comes out and plays that ahead to Havlat on the near boards. Now Nieto angling across against Smead, plays it out to Pavelski. Pavelski will work it past Hoodler, but down on his knees is Smith to clear it back up ice for Calgary. Sharpshooter segment scheduled in our second period. We'll talk about some of the things the NHL general managers discussed at their meetings today, and also the injury to Steven Stamkos of the Tampa Bay Lightning yesterday in the only NHL game played. Here's McCarthy with a shot that's blocked. He's going to be out a while. See how Tampa fares without not just their best player, but one of the best players in the NHL. Well, if you were voting today on MVP, you would have to have him on the top of the ballot. McCarthy, and he's got Boyle now. Two on one. The shot saved by Barra. Reto Barra continues to keep the Flames in this game. They still are hanging around with a minute 45 to go in the second period of a game where they're being outshot 26 to 5, but down by just two. And it's Reto Barra making the difference in that department. Kennedy on to Marlowe at the blue line. Kennedy goes to the net, pokes at it. Barra the stop. Stempniak gives it back to Marlowe. Couture working the boards against Lee Stepniak out to Berchi. Demers comes across and that'll go up into the seats. John McCarthy doing a nice little job here in the neutral zone. Dan Ball starts driving the net. Bang, he's going for the shot, though he tries to kind of surprise Barra. Look how relaxed Barra is in the net there. He's, de he's deep in his net now. A lot of goaltenders play deep in the net, especially a lot of European goaltenders. But John McCarthy, there are no complaints from the coaching staff about the way John McCarthy's playing. They like his speed, they like his attention to detail, they like how smart he is out on the ice. They trust him. Again, that, that word from a coach about a player, that's that's high praise. TJ Brody as we come up on a minute to go here in the second period. Colbert, that was shot under the glove of Stalock, wide. Camilleri from the point, block, and Thornton and Wingles come across center ice. Joining the rushes to Merz. Wingles with the puck, shoots, and Barra the save, no rebound. It's too bad there wasn't a rebound there, too, because Jason Demers was going there, and Barra does a nice job recognizing he wants to come right out and cut this off. Good quick up again, good support. Drive the lane, take the shot. There's Jason Demers going in, but Barra just swallows it up. No rebound, no second opportunity. 
But the Sharks have picked up their play in the last seven, eight minutes of this period. They started to kind of get their groove and get going. Yeah, right now in the second period, Sharks out shooting Calgary 11-2. 11? In the first period, the Sharks had how many shots? Uh, 17. Correct. Thank you. Havlat. I thought there was less though. I thought Look, it was about 15. Looks for Nieto. This will end, folks. No. Put yes, it will, because the period's almost over. Okay. Schmid. Galliardi behind Jones, but he gets to it and just dumps it into the zone. Weidman, and that'll go high off the glass behind Stalock. Galliardi wants stage it. He gets it right out front, but a good read there by Havlat to break it up. Now from the line, Schmid. This one is blocked. Pavelski clears it up off the glove of Nieto. He gets it out. And that's going to do it for period number two here in Calgary. So the Sharks continue to test Calgary's net. Red O'Bara strong. Alex Stalock not nearly quite so busy. But he has a good outing as well through 40 minutes after two periods. It is the Sharks leading the Calgary Flames. Two to nothing coming up. Brody and Brett in the Sportsnet Central Studios. And then Drew and I will be back to talk about Steven Stamkos and the NHL's general manager meetings today. Sportsnet California, the Sharks on top of the Flames. 2-0, both the goals in the first period from Logan Couture, his eighth of the year from Marlowe and Kennedy. And then at the end of the period on a power play, one of only two the Sharks have had tonight. Marlowe broke a seven-game scoring slump and scored six shots through two periods. That ties the Sharks franchise record for fewest shots allowed through 40 minutes of play. As Calgary was held to just three shots in each of the first two periods. Been one of those kind of games where Todd McClellan has been able to roll his lines. If you look at the ice times through 40 minutes, Justin Braun leads all skaters with 14 and a half minutes of ice time. But some of the guys on that fourth line who typically end up with these kind of minutes have already played in John McCarthy's case, almost eight minutes. James Shepard, seven minutes. Desjardins, eight and a half. So should be a fresh group here for the Sharks in the third period as no one has been overtaxed ice time wise. And Calgary's had no power play, so the Sharks have not been on the penalty kill at all. Mike Camilleri with the puck for Calgary now as the Flames try and break through here in front of their home crowd. A sellout here at Scotiabank Saddle Dome. This is the first of three straight at home for the Flames after they come off a four-game road trip. A chance for Camilleri and it's blocked by Vlasic. Gets it back once Stajan can't handle the pass. Hurdle tying up Stajan and he comes out with the puck. Ahead for Wingles. Tommy Wingles takes it off the boards. Wingles brings it round the net against Brody. Nobody with him as the Sharks were on a change. Now he hands it off to Marlowe, and the shot is blocked by the diving Butler. Couture for Marlowe. Kennedy. And now he tries to skate his way out of trouble and does to Couture. Back for Tyler Kennedy. Off a cycle to Couture. Through his legs. Logan back in front for Marlowe. It hit his stick. He couldn't get a shot. But what a play by Couture to get open. Unbelievable to keep that puck. Kennedy, and that's blocked by Brody. Wow. <laughs> and the Flames will clear it. That was Hurdle-esque. Minute and a half gone here in the third period. As the Sharks try and get to the win column on this road trip that started with the disappointing shootout loss at Winnipeg on Sunday night, a game that the Sharks led twice. A game in which they thought they'd won it in overtime but didn't. Pavelski plays this one out. It goes right to Stalock, and he'll hang on. Well, first off, Tommy Wingles and a nice little board pass again by Tomas Hurdle. Tommy Wink gets into the zone. Tommy Wings is way into the zone. There we go. There's the shot from Tyler Kennedy. But watch this play by Logan Couture. Fights off a hook, kicks it down, gets the puck back. Goes between the legs over to Patrick Marlowe. What a play by Logan Couture. Looks like he's getting his groove back. That is a very skilled play at a high level of speed. Weidman for the Ouch. Flames, and that one hits Stewart up under the mask as he is down in the shark zone. Brad. Tough, tough year for Bradley. And Brad Stewart Ouch. 
He smartly wears a visor, but I think this one caught him on the ear. You see him going up to the ear. He's going over, stick on puck. That's what defensemen do, and the puck, unfortunately, ramps up the stick, which can be commonplace, really, because the guy tries to pass. It goes up the stick and hits him right in the ear. Those hurts. And it's been a tough year for Brad. He's, he's, he's had a couple of injuries. That he's had to fight through a little late start, and his play has been a tad inconsistent, but... I, He's not going all the way to the dressing room. We can see he's, he's standing just in the, the hallway. Those sting. You know, you've been smacked on the ear before. Those hurt. Get hit with a puck. Hurts even more. Wingles now to Vlasic. Has some open ice. Takes it through center. The slap shot on net. But whistle blows as Barra made the save as the Sharks are offside. So as Stewart is attended to in the walkway. The Sharks just are a down a D-man. So he's just doing right there. It's he's getting worked on by Ray Tufts. A little bit of blood right there. You worry about you know, all kinds of things, but you never think, well, I don't worry about my ears tonight. It's a tough way to make a living back there. Puck's flying around at 100 miles an hour. Tommy Wingles got hit hard in the corner. He's slow getting up. He got rocked pretty good by Chris Butler. Back come the Flames. Hoodler, who's been one of their more effective forwards this season. Had four points in his last three games coming in. Their leading score with 19 points. The former Red Wing. Sharks on a change. As Calgary controls it in the neutral zone, here's Butler again. To Ferchi, but that puts them offside. So the Flames struggling to get some... Rhythm going here at the start of the third period. There's Brad Stewart back on the bench. There's a hockey player right there. Taking a little bit more blood out of his ear. <laughs> it, I mean, this, you talk about tough athletes all you want, but there's just kind of a thing in hockey that you're going to have to do a lot to get me out of the game, like break a leg. Steven Stamkos, like I said, tried to get up twice. Yeah. Tried to get up twice. He was clearly in tremendous amount of pain once he had to stay down had the surgery today and anywhere from three to six months the projected recovery time and we're right on about three months from the start of the Olympics the rosters will have to be finalized on December 31st that is the deadline so about six weeks from now Team Canada may just put him on the roster and then they'll just have to wait and see if he's able to recover in time to contribute in because, Sochi because of an injury they can go 24 hours up to the first game but if I'm Steve Eisenman I want to play for the Tampa Bay Lightning in the playoffs. Brody, a wrist shot. That's why. Got to get going, you guys, the Sharks. Stage and tees one up. Saved by Staylock. And the rebound popped out wide to the right. A backhander by Camilleri, who missed that one. And the sure-handed Mike Camilleri is going to be thinking about that rebound later on tonight. What a terrific job by Tyler Kennedy. He's the guy in the slot. He's weak side. He comes back and just tips the puck away from... Camilleri. Nice pass to Stempniak, but then it's broken up by Braun. Sharks have used the boards a lot. You noted that earlier. This time it doesn't work as Nieto has it intercepted by Lee Stempniak. The Jardin back intercepts, and now Havlat comes to center. Two man back for Calgary. Havlat comes across the ice, delays, allows Nieto to join him on the rush. Nieto gets Brody down behind the net. Puck still back there. TJ Brody, two men on him. Havlat trying to dig it out. Chris Russell's there, and he'll skate out with it. Here's Hoodler. Sven Berchi and his backhand denied by Braun. Chip by Desjardins through center. Cleaned up by Smith. Over to his defense partner. Here's a chance for Calgary. Sven Berchi tried to go around Braun. And Braun said, eh, maybe in Abbotsford, not here. <laughs> and Smith brings it back for the Flames. Berchi is talented, though. Very We've skilled. seen it. Yeah, very skilled guy. Block there for Stewart. Calgary. Berchi trying to center, McCarthy for Wingles, and he'll get it up and out of the zone. Well, Brett Hennigan talked to Brody Brazil about, you know, Brody asked him, how do you close this out? One of the areas is, oh, nice play right Stalock there. Stalock catches that shot that came right along the goal line from Derek Smith. One of the areas are, you have to do the same things that got you in the situation you're in. How do you get up to nothing? Well, you move the puck efficiently out of your zone, you had good support, you move the puck quickly, and you defended well. 
stick on puck as much as you can stick on puck stick on puck and then just forcing the man to an outside angle that's nothing wrong with that good save by alex daylock there it's a good smart defensive play by justin Braun. only the seventh shot on goal in the game for calgary russell and staylock's best save of the game right there that's off a face-off loss here come the flames defense they're pinching now off the stick of thornton but he pushes it up one-handed to wingles weidman's back he angles wingles to the near boards and galliardi retrieve it 2-0 Sharks. All the scoring in the first from Couture and Marlowe. Calgary putting on a push here now in the third. Trying to break through against Stalock. Hurdle has Thornton and Jones. Not a good backhand pass. Turned it over at his own blue line. Russell, his backhander blocked by Boyle out of play. you got to make, Joe Thornton knows better than that. He's got to make better plays than that at his own blue line. Just under 14 left here in the third. And this is a save that's just positioning only right here. Because look at all the traffic Alex Daylock has in front of him. Trying to find it, boom, he's in the right position, makes the stop. You see him stand up to try to find the puck. That's what goalies do now. A lot of goalies used to go down real low. Now he stands up to try to find it. And then he's just in the right position, reading the game, and the puck hits him. Chris Russell with the guy that was shooting it. Another face-off loss. Camilleri gets it out front. Now Marlowe with some speed to center, and he gets it in. All the way around to Brody for Calgary. Butler back for Brody, looks at Stajan, but passes it to his right for Stempniak. And that'll drop for Camilleri, and he had a man alone up in front. That was Stajan, but it never got all the way through as Couture rips a wrist shot to the net. Barrett catches, drops, covers, shovels it ahead. Stage in again. Stepniak takes it off the boards. Nice to stop and turn. Lost the puck after losing his edge. And we've got a San Jose penalty behind the play. The first Sharks penalty of the game. It'll go to Justin Braun for interference. Well, this would be a big moment in the hockey game. San Jose number 61. Two minutes for interference. Justin Braun arguing with him a little bit. But he is going to be in the box. Calgary's power play has been, well, nothing to write home about. Oh, for their last 30 over the last nine games. That was after going eight for 34 in their first eight games. So they've had some difficulty, and they've really missed Giordano up at the point. Well, also Stempniak, who, as you mentioned, injured, but Stempniak really changed this. This is a very, actually a very good-looking power play. Even though they have not been successful lately, this is a very good-looking power play. Expect big shots from the point, especially from Weidman. Also, you have Stempniak. He'll cruise into a high slot area. There's a lot of things going on in this power play. It looks pretty good. The rookie, Monaghan, number 23, at center on the ice. He has two power play goals and leads them in that category this year. Watch for Hooper back door here. Here's Russell. Fire score! You called it. I told you. Big shot from the point by Chris Russell. And Calgary makes it 2-1. to one. That's a big goal. Face-off loss again. Joe Thornton chases out. Chris Russell sidesteps. Boom. Just a big blast. Joe Thornton jets out. But what you want to do is you want to protect the middle. And you want to push Russell, keep Russell on the board. Instead, Joe goes at him hard. Russell just makes a sidestep, goes to the middle, and boom, it's in the net. And also the face-off loss. Whiskey. And you also talked about Stempniak's presence on the power play. He's the one who screened Stalock, who really didn't see that go in. Five seconds after the pucks drop, the Calgary Flames get back to within a goal. As Chris Russell gets the power play goal on Calgary's ninth shot of the game. Weidman, and that'll go wide. So Russell ruins Stalock's bid at a first career shutout. Now the Sharks have to get back to work and make sure that they're able to take care of business here. Colburn for Calgary. Brings it out. Has time. Now he's pressured by Vlasic and dumps it deep. Jones. Galliardi walks in. The pass for Colburn and he missed. 
Well, when you are a team that has lost five games in a row, I'm sure it's apparently coming up again. Man, oh man. Another Calgary power play to come on a tripping call here. After Russell just scored from Monaghan at 6.51, Calgary will go back to the man advantage. When you are winless in five and you're getting close to a win to snap it, you freeze up a little bit. You get a little nervous. There's the stick on the legs, Tyler Kennedy, and all of a sudden you stop skating. You stop doing the things that got you to where you are. And Tom McCauley had a little conversation with the referee. He's not really excited about the call. The first call was, was a terrible call, to tell you the honest, goodness truth. It was Justin Brown didn't touch his man. Actual guy fell over Alex Daylock, but now is this, that's irrelevant. Point now is that the Sharks have to come up with a huge kill. So Calgary coming off a power play goal by Russell, back on it with Kennedy in the box for tripping. And now this crowd back in it for the first time. They're in it for the first time since the anthem. As the Sharks so dominated that first period out shooting them 17-3, stoppage here. Minute 39 left to go on the power play and Todd McClellan sends out fresh penalty killers as does Bob Hartley on the other side with a new power play unit. Now Brody for the Flames. Drops it at center for Yuri Hoodler. Hoodler weaves his way in. Now round to the far side for Camilleri. Back at the point. Stepniak. Stepniak goes to the net at the urging of Camilleri. Far side, Hudler, and he had Stepniak in the crease and missed him with the pass. Brody tees it up. That's blocked. Hudler for Brody, good and stop. a good stick by Couture gets it out. Great recovery by Camilleri. Now Calgary with an odd man attack. Sharks had a bad change. Stalock the save. Loose in the crease. They fight for it and Stalock's got what it. What a play by Alex Stalock. That is strong goaltending right there. The Sharks did not get the change they wanted. Camilleri made a really nice play on the boards. Quick attack, outnumbered situation. That's the save. Hold on to it. Hold on to it. There's a lot of Hacking and whacking and thwacking going on there, Randy. But Alex Daylock had that puck covered well. There's the pass across, drive to the net. There's Stepniak, deflection, puck sitting there. Timeout, I do believe, Tom McCullough. Thought for a minute you said that Hack and Lube was out there. No, I thought it was those guys that we drafted that one year, <laughs> the guys from Finland. So a timeout, and 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 <laughs> timeout on the penalty kill, 8 50, uh, 53 to go on the penalty to Kennedy as we update you on the schedule going forward beyond here tonight. Sharks will fly to Vancouver after this and we'll be on the air from British Columbia on Thursday night. Pre-game live at 6.30, play-by-play -play at 7. Then the back-to-back -back next night from Edmonton. Same scenario, 6.30 and 7. Trip wraps up in Chicago against the defending cup champs on Sunday. That's a 3.30 p.m. pre-game and then the Sharks are back at home to face some Eastern clubs. 2-1 here, Calgary on the power play. Face off win, nice face off win. You got the right hander, Justin Braun, popping into the boards, and on his forehand, just drooling it out of the glass. That is a well set up play. You know who does that? Coaching staff. Jimmy Johnson handles the penalty kill. They handle that very well. Mike Camilleri. Okay. Takes it back to Hoodler. Now Yuri Hoodler gains the zone. They set it up from the point. Camilleri back for Hoodler on the boards. Camilleri, he lets go with a shot that's blocked. The Jardin gets in front of it and gets it cleared. All right, that's what you got to do. You got to battle now. That's all it's about. Down to five seconds on the power play. Monahan gets it back from Stempniak. Sean Monahan. Here's Monahan. Back to the goal line now. Penalty's over. And Marlowe with it. Ahead for Kennedy. He'll get to it in time. Kennedy out of the box. Drop pass. Couture. Shot. Saved by Barra. And he covers the rebound just ahead of Couture. Sharks get the job done on the penalty kill. They lead 2-1. The power play of the Calgary Flames. Go ahead and roll it, guys. Nice little drop pass, then drive towards the net. 
overplayed defensively. That is not a good overplay by Whiteman. That allowed Logan Couture just to toe drag. Quick shot, go to the net, but unfortunately for the San Jose Sharks, no rebound opportunity there. Red O'Barrow with 28 saves in his home debut here in Calgary. This is Barra's fourth appearance this year, one and two coming in. Now Vlasic off the faceoff win, and that's blocked at front. Hurdle with Boyle, and Stajan punches it out to center. Stempniak with Matt Stajan. Knocked down by Thornton. There's a shot from long range, and they tie the game. Mike Cavallari. Here's the play coming into the zone. Joe Thornton has it. Blocks it, but he blocks it right to Mike Camilleri. That's a tough break for the Sharks right there. You're blocking shots. Mike Camilleri jumps on it. And the Flames have fought their way back from a two-goal deficit. As good as the Sharks were in the first period and later on in the second, they have not been sharp in this third period. And it's kind of expected because, like we said, you're struggling, so your confidence isn't there. And now their confidence will really be fragile. The Sharks experiencing somewhat what they experienced against Calgary at home when San Jose had a 4-1 lead at one point. Calgary got to within 4-3 in the third. But here they've tied it as Mike Cavallari gets his eighth goal of the year. We talked about him in our open. He's got four goals in his last three games. Butler with the only assist at 10-25. So we're back where we started, an even game. 2-2 though, as the Sharks have been held off the scoreboard since 1904 of the first period on that goal by Marlow on the power play. And here's Sven Berchi. Berchi across the San Jose line and a save by Stalock. Colburn out to the point for Russell. Russell takes a shot, Stalock the save, oh. and then he's run in too by there. one of the Flames. Gotta be a call there, does it not? David Jones making contact with the San Jose netminder and Stalock down on the ice a little shake it up. Stick raked across your face and there's no call. Good there will be no by, penalty. Wow. Good save by Alex Daylock. Save. There's there. Oh, come on. How is that not a call by the official right there? Wow. It, it's mind-boggling sometimes. Face-off stays in the San Jose zone. 8.39 to go in the third. It's 2-2. Calgary with all the momentum right now. As they got one on the power play to get to within one, and then Camilleri moments ago to tie it at 10-25. Yes, they've lost nine of 12, but the Flames have been in so many games where they lost by a goal or lost by two, but that second one was an empty netter when they were trying to tie. They've been in so many this year, but an icing call here against the Sharks will send it back down into their end. Faceoffs 9-6 right now for Calgary in this third period. That's been a big key. The Sharks very good in the first period, not bad in the second. In the third period, Calgary is winning that face-off battle, and that changes the complexion of everything. These teams 11 points apart in the standings. San Jose with 25, Calgary with 14, but they're even right now here in the third. On Calgary ice, Stajan tussles with Braun. Couture there to support. And Marlowe will try and run a little interference on Camilleri, but the Sharks can't get to the puck as it's right outside the crease area, and Stajan couldn't pick it up. Marlowe gets it out past Camilleri. Moves by him. Marlowe looking for a bounce there, but now he'll head to the bench on a change. Colburn, or check that, Weidman for Calgary over the San Jose line. Got through a stick check by Boyle. McCarthy recovers. On to James Shepard. Shepard across center. Desjardins goes to the net looking for the rebound. Desjardins now for Shepard behind the goal. Shepard on his forehand. Throws it at the goal. And Barrow will stop it and hold. They need a bunch of these shifts right now. A bunch of those shifts where you got guys getting in deep. Getting the puck to the net. Throwing it at the feet of Barrow anytime you get an opportunity. 
Good work down low. Chip it low. Keep working behind the goal line. Keep working low. Don't throw it out in the slot. Blind, throw it to the feet of the goaltender. Right, Barra does a nice job on covering that up. Well, and you go back to Barra in the first period when he made 15 saves on 17 San Jose shots and kept Calgary in this. And now they've backed him with some offense. Thornton in front. Hurdle all alone, and it's knocked away. Barra might have poke checked it off his stick. A great range. Now Thornton behind the net, can't pick it up. Stempniak for Calgary. He'll flip it clear to center. Classic, carefully handling it against Stajan. Boyle on the entry, Wingles to Thornton. Now Wingles, and can't get a hold of it as Berchi plays it up. He gets it back from Hoodler. Sven Berchi scampers over the blue line. Trying to get by Vlasic, Boyle supporting. Good support. Couple of shifts now, better. Pavelski can't get through center. Now gets it in and just away from a half lap. Now Demers has to hurry back a three on two developing for Calgary. Hoodler over the line to Berchi. Slap shot block. Weidman and Havlat has Pavelski. Joe Pavelski one man back. He'll curl back at the line. Off the boards for Martin Havlat. Now Brad Stewart. He pounds one. It's blocked by Jones. Another shot by Stewart and went through the crease past Havlat. Demers floats one into the Calgary zone as Chris Russell quickly moves away from Couture. Up ice to Galliardi at center. He's got Jones and Backlund with him. Galliardi this handles it a bit. Now Jones back for TJ Galliardi. The former Shark trying to weave away from traffic. He's got Braun and Marlowe to contend with. Now McCarthy, that comes into an area where there were Flames and Sharks. And Stewart's able to get it out. T.J. Brody shovels it back. Now he gets it back from Schmied and wrists it in. Thornton's there. Stewart back for Joe Thornton. In this third period, Calgary out shooting the Sharks 6 4, and they've scored both their goals here in the third. Camilleri up at center. Now Stepniak back for Camilleri. On to stage it, and a save by Stalock. Great stick check by Alex Stalock. Nice entry, nice three on two rush. Back behind the San Jose net, and Vlasic moving to it. Thornton carefully as Stajan was there and now up for Tommy Wingles. Four and a half to go in the third, a 2-2 game. Sharks changing on the fly as Wingles takes it deep against Butler. Wingles pucking his skates to Nieto and Nieto's pass to the point blocked in Calgary. Monaghan up for Hoodler. Hoodler bats it ahead. Pavelski, but Stalock plays it instead. Now off a deflection to the near glass. Weidman up at center across to his D partner, Chris Russell. 2-2 here in the third in Calgary. Hoodler looks for Sean Monahan. The rookie gets to the corner, but so does Hannon. Now picked up by Hoodler. And Berchi fumbled it. He would have had a chance at a good shot. Havlat will toss it in for Couture. Logan gets it away from Russell. To Marlow, backhand and saved by Barra. There's a shot from Shepard, back to Braun. Justin Braun, Rister, and that glances off Russell's helmet and out of play. Mike Camilleri gets his eighth of the year and ties the game here in Calgary. Back here in Calgary where it's time for our Toyota game summary. Here's all the scoring, first period. Sharks outshot Calgary 17-3. Logan Couture broke out of a four-game scoring slump his eighth of the year. Then Patrick Marlowe. He'd gone seven straight without a goal until that one over the shoulder of Red O'Bara, who was good in the period despite the two goals against. That allowed Calgary to come back in the third. The power play slap shot by Chris Russell made it 2-1. And then just a little bit ago, Mike Camilleri with the backhand beats Alex Stalock for a second time tonight. His eighth. And that's where we stand. 2-2, 3.29 to go. Calgary's been held to 12 shots on goal, but Red Overa's 32 saves at the other end has kept them in it. 
Not the first time the Sharks have had to battle through hot goaltending. No. Nor will it be the last time this year. Brian Miller did it to them. Mike Smith did it to them. And Todd McClellan says that you have to find ways to stop making the other guy look like the first star. Couture, now a chance for Marlowe, takes the shot. He went for that same corner on the rebound. It is Shepard. Move Tyler Kennedy off this line. Stewart at center, muscles past Stempniak and slaps it in. Shepard on this side and he'll backhand it down to Logan. Couture back for Shepard. Now Marlowe. Gets the puck settled, then he's checked to the ice by Weidman. Weidman leaning hard on Marlowe, who gets back up. Feeds Shepard. Now Couture. Back to the point, and Braun can't catch it. stalock has got plenty of time as both teams change on the go here. Under three to go in the third. Thornton on the entry. His shot off the stick wide to Hurdle. Tomas Hurdle. That's blocked. Hurdle follows his rebound, and batting away at it in front was Wingles. Back to the front of the net. Thornton guides it to Vlasic. His shot off Wingles wide. Berchi muscling it out to center. Back to the stick of Thornton and they whistle it down. Stay tuned. E-Surance Sharks post game live. Coming up next, Brody Brazil and Brett Hedekin are back in the studio to break things down. Jamie Baker's here on the radio side. He'll jump over to add some perspective as well. That's right after the game tonight. Will it end in regulation? Right now, 2.25 to go in a 2-2 game. Plenty of three-point games around the NHL tonight. Phoenix beat St. Louis 3-2 in overtime. Winnipeg, they've won three in a row. They beat Detroit 3-2 in a shootout. Tampa Bay beat Montreal in a shootout. That's uplifting for the Lightning after losing yeah. Stamkos. No kidding. L.A. lost in a shootout and lost starting goaltender Jonathan Quick. Ben Scrivens had to finish that game. Here's Butler now from the point, and that got all the way to Dan Boyle's skates. Dan Boyle turns away from Backlund with two minutes to go. Good bit of skating from Dan. Pavelski over the Calgary line, backhands it to the net. Red O'Barrow will catch it and hold. Well, Dan Boyle really known for his footwork. He did a nice job there coming out of the zone. And Joe Pavelski didn't have much of an option, so all he did after the Dan got the puck to Joe and they got moving up was just get the puck towards now. Here's Dan Boyle. Starting to feel better and better. This is you can tell Dan's playing well, skating well. Just came out of the corner a little bit of an elusive move, evasive move. Then throw the puck towards the net. Get worst case scenario, you get the face off down in their zone. Now Couture at center, flanked on his right by McCarthy. And it's played by Marlowe to the point. Hannon takes a wrist shot, deflects behind the net, and a chance for McCarthy, and he fan a bouncing puck on a great feed for Marlowe. Couture keeps it alive to Marlowe in front. Can't get it to the net, but he'll pursue it at the boards. Now back to Couture. On to McCarthy as they cycle off the boards to Demers. His shot blocked in front by Weidman. Sharks had another whack at it. Now it's still deep behind the goal line. Russell will just slap it around and try and get it out and does to Camilleri. Camilleri's out pass, broken up. McCarthy to Couture. Logan. Lost his edge against Stajan, and Calgary clears. Well, Sharks have turned it on. They felt the pressure. They've got the spark right now. Fresh line on. It's Thornton on with Wingles and Hurdle. They've been the same line all night. Hurdle steals. Hurdle to Wingles, and he missed the net high. Thought that was it. Hurdle again from behind the net to Thornton. Joe banks it to Braun. Braun back to Thornton. Under a minute to go. Thornton for Wingles. Handcuffed him a bit. Now he gets it back to Thornton. Joe winds up. The pass far side for Stewart who jumped in, but he couldn't make contact with it. And it's cleared out to center. Inside the final minute here of regulation. Stewart trying to slap it in. It goes off Berchi out of play with 31 and change to go. An errant pass. Picked off by Tomas Hurdle, Tommy Wingles from the high slot. There it is, one time high slot, quick snap. Oh, puck just rolling a little bit. Got up too high. That would have been a beauty. Backlund stands in against Joe Pavelski. And Pavelski cleanly wins that back to Dan Boyle. His shot glances off Russell wide. Cleared to the blue line and Vlasic had to settle that, make sure it got deep rather than have to chase somebody on a breakaway. Exactly.
Down to a dozen seconds now. The stretch pass tipped in by Galliardi. Vlasic back on it. That's chipped back out by Nieto. We go again. We're going to overtime, folks. This will be a three-pointer. Calgary comes on with two goals in the third period. They finish the three periods with only 12 shots on goal, but they've got a chance for two points now. Well, the Sharks have been in many overtime games as of late. They've won two of them. Oh, wait, no, they haven't. They've had two goals scored in overtime, thanks to Tommy Wingles and the work. This one against the Buffalo Sabres in the very controversial, let's not go upstairs and make sure it, it went in non-call by the... I think he was intending to blow the whistle, but not really because we had it on video that it was a bad call. Anyway, and here's the one where Thomas, uh, Tommy Wingles was called for goalie interference. That's that one right there. You can argue whether you thought he was interfering with him or not, but according to the referee and what he thought he saw, he made the right call. There he made the right call because he thought that Tommy Wingles interfered with the goalie. And Tommy Wingles, I think we talked, we talked on the plane, Tommy Wingles has said the best thing for you during overtime is just stay away from the crease. He said, yeah, I know. He said, I remember last year too, I think it was against Calgary where Tommy had one called back. Calgary's overtime win was the one we talked about. Red Obero's, Red Obero's first win when Chris Russell scored in overtime in Chicago. The Sharks have well, not been able to win it in overtime yet this year. You saw Chris Russell and his shot. It's a bomb. Four on four, more ice. San Jose did pick it up once the game got tied. And they got a little scared. They got a little jump in their game again. They started putting more and more pressure on Barron. That huge missed opportunity. High and high and hard by Tommy Wingles would have been the beauty. Sharks had a 2-0 lead in Winnipeg the other night. They led 3-1. They led 4-3. Jets kept coming back. And now Calgary comes back here in the third. That's been that's been the problem in this in these games lately for the Sharks. They've had leads, but they've given them up. Off the faceoff, Couture gets it away from Matt Stajan. Scramble for it after that, and it puts Calgary offside. Couture out there with Marlowe, Vlasic, and Boyle. Two of the best players tonight have been Logan Couture and Patrick Marlowe. They've had a big jump to their game. Todd McClellan at the end of the game put James Shepard out in that line, took Tyler Kennedy off, then he put Johnny McCarthy out in that line. No. He's just trying to find something. And Russell trying to keep it away from Marlowe. On to Lee Stepniak. We're in overtime here in Calgary. Russell up through center, stolen by Boyle. Now Marlowe comes in. Stepniak on the back. Jack Marlowe to Couture. Logan, nice move. Now far side. He's got Boyle there, but Russell got a stick on it. Boyle keeps it in to Blasic. And that's broken up by Russell. Russell to the San Jose line. Pulls the trigger. Staylock knocks it down. Not the mask. So big rebound to he this side. That, didn't he? Like a soccer player. Now Vlasic turns back as the Sharks change up, buys a little time, hands it off to Boyle. We're a minute deep into the overtime here in Calgary. Stewart. Now Thornton with Hurdle. Brad Stewart goes to the net. Thornton shot. They score! Brad Stewart wins the game in overtime. And the Sharks get a victory here in Calgary. Drive the net. Get a shot. Brad Stewart, the defenseman, drives the net. Joe Thornton shoots the puck. Yes, Joe Thornton shooting the puck. There's the drive. Hard shot. Bang. Hits Brad Stewart in the leg. Goes in. Referee immediately counts it a goal. They're leaving the ice. That's a good sign for the San Jose Sharks. And the third time, the lucky one. Third time, the charm for the Sharks. They score in overtime, and it counts. And the Sharks get a big win. And how about the save by Alex Daylock? There's the shot. There's the drive. Bounces between the legs. Good things happen when you drive the net. Brad Stewart's first goal of the year, and it's huge against his old team. And the Sharks snap a five-game losing streak here in Calgary. Final score in overtime. San Jose 3, Calgary 2.